Hi, flower lovers. It's nice to be back with you. Rokana and I today wanted to take up the topic of toxic shame. We have been reflecting on this. Um, and as the, as we go into the fall season, sometimes it's really useful to kind of do this inner work and we've been discussing it and thinking about how much of our practices are really about helping people release this, this legacy of, of the emotional abuses we've received of the toxic relationships of the toxic patriarchy. There's a lot. Um, and we wanted to talk about some essences that help to relieve shame because it's a really big topic. It's a really big troubling, um, experience internally. And the good news, <laughs> flower essences are incredibly helpful for helping to release this. So that's our topic today. I'm, I'm really glad to be talking about this with you, Ro. Yeah, it is. It's just so important because I think as we, you know, it comes up over and over again as really a root cause for sort of these more superficial like relationship challenges or emotional challenges, you know, when you dig into it during like a flower essence therapy session and, and over the course of time, I'm sure that, you know, you've seen it time and again with your clients, Kathleen, just as I, that there's kind of a lot of the time there might be this sort of deep sense of shame hiding out somewhere that is um, sort of at the core, you know, it's one of the core, core issues. Uh, don't you think? I, f I so agree. You know, there we we can come in with to a recognition of I'm really unhappy, or I'm feeling anxious all the time, or you know whatever whatever the sort of the presenting complaint might be, and by just spending a little time with it and and doing a little inquiry into you know where it's residing in your body, what what the kind of constant emotional state is, um, we can often find underneath of it is a, an experience of feeling like you're not enough. There's something wrong with you. There's just something like, I'm not right. <laughs> I'm not, I've never been enough. I've never been, uh, it's just, it's so big. And to have that running under the surface all the time is such a burden on your emotional system, on your nervous system, on your life. And to be able to relieve that, to be able to bring relief to that is an extraordinary gift. Um, I'm, I'm sure that, that you've had some experiences with that also. Yeah. And it's that, it's that idea that we're, that there's something wrong with us. And that can be, so when, you know, when I, when I talk about shame, I mean, I think that's what it ultimately comes down to. So it's not like being embarrassed, although that might be a part of it. Right. But it's, it's not that, that um, it's not that shy embarrassment. It's, it's more of that deeper um, feeling flawed. Um, and then also the, the fear that other people are going to to discover that about you <laughs> or that, or that they see that about you and trying to hide it. Um, I guess what really brought this up for me recently, um, this, you know, the, the way that it's tied in with emotional abuse and sometimes physical abuse is the Gabby Petito case that is, you know, all over the media. It's gotten a huge amount of media attention and, um, and so I happened to see, you know, some of the body footage, you know, the body cam footage and, and read a bit about the case just because there's so much information out there about it. Um, and seeing the, seeing, seeing body now, I'm not, you know, we can't know anything about her and we can't, you know, based on social media, there's a million internet sleuths out there digging away, but the, her body language triggered me. It triggered me in seeing and recognizing um, that feeling, that feeling of something's wrong with me. I don't have a, a, a right to be here or to take up space or to verbalize my needs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I 
that's Kathleen why I kind of pinged you I think we need to talk about this I think we need to talk more about this and I and I also want to make sure that you know it's not just about Gabby you know a white woman who's gone missing and murdered because there are literally eight times as many um, women of color that go missing and murdered all the time and it's it's a horrible situation so any way that we can just help bring awareness to recognizing the signs of 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 being abused or manipulated or controlled and then what we can do internally to sort of change that dynamic um, I think would be helpful I, I completely agree and also we want to just express for you listeners um, you know if you are not safe if you're not safe at home, if you're not safe in your relationship, please get help. Please, 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 please um, reach out to the National D Domestic Violence Hotline um, at thehotline.org. Um, and their phone number is 800-799-SAFE. There's also the Victim Connect uh, Resources National Hotlines. And that is that is absolutely paramount um, to, if you are not safe, please ask for help. Please get help. Please make a plan and get out. Um, that is your safety and your well-being are very important to us. And so we want to make sure that you know those things and you know that people care and there are resources for you available. And, you know, there, there's a whole spectrum of that sort of abuse that happens. Um, and if it's, I'm going to use air quotes, just emotional, <laughs> <laughs> that is no less important for you to be to be looking at and to be taking care of yourself. So we really want to encourage you to get help there too. Shame thrives on silence and secrecy. And the more that you can speak out, you can find your voice, you can connect to those who care, um, to your friends, to your family, whoever you can reach out to, your community to be able to share what's going on and not need to hide behind a mask of that everything's okay. Uh, that is oftentimes a really important step and often a first step uh, because a lot of these things take place in the shadows. A lot of these shaming experiences take place in the, in the shadows and the cure for that is a little sunlight and to be getting support and people to really see you and they really want to help you. So I wanted to make sure we talked about that too. Yeah, absolutely. And then just to, you know, also to clarify, um, we, you know, when we're talking about using these flower essences there, we're working, we're working on those deep inner levels for somebody who's sort of already in the process. Um, and as Kathleen said, you know, if you're in the crisis of, of where you're in danger, don't, you know, like maybe if you have flower essences to help you, but that's not going to solve the problem. So you need to, you need to, to, to reach out to the hotlines or, or whatever support system you have to get out of any kind of immediate danger. And so with flower essences, you know, how Kathleen, how would you, how would you go about say some, a client comes to you who's been recently in the situation, or maybe doesn't even realize they're being controlled and manipulated. Yeah, I'd like to start just by telling a little bit of the trajectory that I've experienced, uh, because I think that it's it's useful. And, and by being able to tell my story, it's very empowering to me as well. And I've found that when I have been able to share it, um, a lot of people recognize themselves in, in certain aspects of it as well. And that's also part of this shared experience that, you know, everybody has a story, everybody has an experience. And so with in my particular individual scenario, you know, I was, I was born into um, and grew up in a fundamentalist doomsday cult. And the part of the system was women were, you know, subjugated and the levels of misogyny uh, and, and toxicity in this scenario were very, very high. And I was, you know, raised up to think my greatest you know, version was essentially to be a servant and to be obedient and compliant um, to authority. And that was enforced, um, you know, with physical um, spanking uh, and, and that sort of thing from, you know, you know, more or less the time I was born. 
And so I developed this, you know, this learned helplessness. Um, I didn't realize I had a voice. I didn't realize I had the ability to stand up for myself. And it took me many, many, many years, decades to figure this out, to start to work my way through it. And I started to work my way through it sort of more intellectually at first. Um, and I knew that there was nothing wrong with me. I knew that this experience of shame that was just absolutely, you know, buried deeply within me. Um, I knew that wasn't right. I, I knew, but I didn't know how to do anything about it. And, you know, I mean, nature has always saved my life. Um, you know, growing up in that circumstance in that, you know, truth only came from outside of you that, you know, these, these authority figures were telling me what, what, what life was. And, you know, that, that God was an angry and, obviously a guy, um, <laughs> women were very secondary. And this, this toxicity that got built into my system, the only peace I had was in nature. The, the only peace was outside the, that, that always had truth. It felt like truth to me and inside with the people, it, it always was very confusing and distressing. So growing up and, and getting out of that scenario was one thing physically, but to get out of that internally was another thing. And, you know, I, I remember this situation of, of talking to some friends and one of my friends said to me, you should forgive yourself. You know, um, you know, and I was, I felt so bad and I was feeling horrible about things that I had done when I didn't believe I was had any value, forgive yourself. And I'm like, what a great idea. How does that work? <laughs> Because <laughs> I knew it. I knew there was nothing, you know, intellectually, I knew like, yeah, of course I was a victim. Um, but um, to be able to actually release it, my cells believed it. My, it, was, it was baked into my, into my physical form, into my heart. And, you know, years later, I thought, you know, I really have to do something about this. I really have to do something. This is, this is unhealthy. So I had known about flower essences a little bit from working with my birds um, because they're safe for using with your animals. And I looked into it and I thought, pine, pine, inappropriate guilt. Yeah, that seems right. And so I started to use it and I started to use it reliably and, you know, regularly. And, you know, after a few weeks, after a month, I looked back and I went, oh my God, that, that feeling is gone it was just gone. And I've, I haven't felt that way ever since. I continually kind of touch back in with pine because it's been an ally to me. And even just talking about getting ready for this episode, I've been touching back in with pine because it's helpful for removing these layers um, over time. But man, I cannot tell you how much pine changed my life. <laughs> it's one of the Bach essences and I've told other people and they've had similar experiences. So that is absolutely my first go-to essence for, for this topic. Um, ha have, you, have you worked with pine? Is that a friend to you? Yeah, but I'm just, you know, I'm still reeling from the, the the story that you think thank you for sharing that. It 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 um you know, it's it's hard to to get that personal in in public and and I really honor and appreciate that. Um I haven't used pine in the intensity that you've used it that over a month uh, long and but I I do of course use it in in blends and and all the time and use it with my clients it's it's uh it it definitely you know especially when there is it's not just any guilt it's like guilt that's out of proportion for what happened right because we all especially those of us working on self-development and self-help. I mean, we want to take responsibility and fix our fit, quote unquote, fix ourselves. There's nothing wrong with you, but we, we get into that mindset of, of wanting to fix ourselves and to get better and do better. And, um, and so when something goes wrong, I know for me, I don't, I can't speak for everyone, but I, I think it's common when you've been doing all this self-work for a long time to, to over take over responsibility for every 
like negative scenario that happens in your life. And I, I have done that so many times in my life. Uh, maybe it's also part of being like an oldest child and having that like super responsibility mindset to begin with. And then, you know, getting into the, into the world of healing and self-help and, and self-improvement. It's like, I just took that on overdrive <laughs> and uh, that's not healthy. <laughs> that's causing, that's causing harm. So, um, so pine is also, I, you know, I love it for, for that purpose as well. Yeah. There's something about pine that it, it just helps you drop. It helps you drop the over processing that's happening. You know, when I've sat with pine, you know, I'm really interested in when I develop essences, I'm really interested in the botanical qualities. Um, and the conifer family is a is is beyond ancient. Um, they certainly predate the flowering plant families, the flowers as we know them. So conifers were one of the very first um, types of plants that grew here on the planet. And they have this this grounded physical quality of being really present. Um, they, they have this ability to be embodied. Uh, and I found that, that pine and pines and conifers in general are really helpful for this, this how to live life kind of quality. It, I don't know how to explain it better than that, but there's, there's something to that pine, that, that conifer family. There really is. And, you know, I, I, feel like they just have so much perspective, you know, they have, they, they're really our el you know, they're like our elders and, um, there is, you know, I, I have a relationship with a particular redwood that, that grows near me. And it's just this constant source of support. You know, I go, I go walk over to it, um, stand next to it, get in its field, touch it, kind of talk to it. Sometimes I can get messages and sometimes I, it's just that sense of feeling like this is a friend of mine, but, but a, a solid, the solid, like long-term, um, that there's this a longevity to it there that it's, it's been there for so long and it's so big and it's seen so much and it's so connected and grounded and, if I'm upset, that's where I go. <laughs> and then I feel better. It's, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's the, that's a redwood. So the pines, uh, you know, the, the Douglas firs, the, um, you know, all of the conifers I've that they, there's a, there is a similar thread that I see as well. So they all have their, you know, your unique energies, but there is something there. There's something to that. They're, they're like giants in, you know, um, there are these beings that are just quite incredible. Yeah, completely agree. It's, it's very interesting to sort of see the different expressions of conifer as they come in different ecosystems. And, and for Dr. Bach to, I don't think there's any other conifers in Bach's system. Um, well, Larch is a conifer also. Um, but to, to have him sort of feel this, feel this experience and to, to offer to us um, such an incredibly healing um, quality uh, in the system. I, I, it's certainly one that I use as much, at least as if not more than a lot of the others. So I wanted to uh, be sure we brought, thank Dr. Bach for that um, and bringing that pine in. I, my, my, there are so many other essences that I think of when I'm working with clients that have this toxic shame experience. And, and I also want to bring in Brene Brown's work right now because her ability to, to bring this out of the shadows and to be able to help us to start talking about it. Oh, what a gift. Thank you, Brene. <laughs> really appreciate. It. And, you know, for those who aren't familiar, perhaps with her, um, she's written a number of books. Um, she's got um, a very um, influential TED talk, probably more than one by now uh, on this topic. And so if this is something that you want to learn more about, that would be a really good place to go. Pink monkey flower is sort of my second tier go-to essence. And I use this essence for, and it's, and it's very broad, but it is that shame that resides in your heart. Um, and this is 
oftentimes a good step when you feel like no one will accept you if they actually saw who you were. When you feel like you'll be rejected for, for if they really knew who you were. And, and so much of this shame, it, it, cause it's hiding in the shadows, it's hiding in secrecy and in, in silence. And to be able to start opening your heart to someone else, to open your heart to your community, family, whoever, and let them know how you're feeling. Um, it's, it's a very healing experience and pink monkey flower can help us start to overcome that need that, that desire for silence and that desire for isolation that only makes it worse that, you know, it's, it's only a negative spiral and, you know, it's just, it's such an important essence. And I, I think that you probably also use this one and are familiar with it. Absolutely. And I, I also like, um, agrimony as, as part of that, it, it helps with when you, you know, that cover up, but when you're covering it up with a mask of cheerfulness or, you know, try it. And, and this is so common, even more so I think today than any other time, because why? Because social media, right? We all, you know, everybody has their happy pictures on Facebook and Instagram. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like we spend even more time today, I think, than maybe years past of putting on the, the happy face and making it look like nothing's wrong. So, um, even people who maybe didn't used to do that so much now with social media <laughs> are doing it inadvertently because that's kind of what we do, you know, who wants to post, you know, sad pictures <laughs> um, and agrimony, you know, helps, helps with that covering up that shame. Um, you know, it's, it's not, we don't need to, to live our entire life, you know, like the Stepford <laughs> wives or whatever. Uh, I think agrimony would be perfect for that. Yeah, agrimony is is such an essential, um, you know, pivotal foundational essence. And you're so right that that social media really does, you know, want us to be bright and happy and bouncy all the time. And you know, we're sort sort of expecting that. And and maybe even worse is is that we believe we believe that we believe that other people are living those awesome lives <laughs> and, and it helped and it makes us even feel even more isolated because everyone is inside this bubble of, of shame that we're not living this awesome, amazing, fabulous life, you know, taking vacations or whatever it is we're doing, um, you know, you know, fabulously, whatevering all, all the time. And we, we build up more and more walls to authenticity and to, you know, where we really are. And agrimony has, you know, once again, this is one that I'm very familiar with and, and, and use a lot personally and also um, in my practice because it feels like, it feels like in order to be accepted, you have to have, like, be the positive one. You know, you'll be rejected if you're not fun. You know, nobody wants to be around me if I'm really how I feel right now. And it's such a trap, especially since what I experience most of the time, if I'm actually really real about it, I can share it and then it can release. If I have to hide it, it stays there forever. Being able to actually express true feeling and in, in the right place in the right time, you know, not all, not all the time, but in, in personal relationships, you should be able to tell somebody how you're feeling and not have to be putting on a mask. So agrimony is oh, so helpful. Yeah. I mean, you're so right about, about expressing it and releasing it. And maybe if there's nobody that you can talk to right now, you can at the very least journal it or do something artistic or creative or something to get it out of the system. And, but what you're saying, Kathleen is so true. There's gotta be somebody in your life that you can talk to. Um, if it's not in a personal relationship or a friendship or a therapist or anyone that you're seeing, you know, therapeutically, I mean, it, you know, I, I hear stories and jokes about people not saying things to their therapist because they're too whatever. And, and that's, that defeats the purpose. That's what they're there for. Um, so don't keep it inside. 
Um, and what, you know, at, but as we're, Kathleen, as we're kind of navigating through this, there's just so many little pieces and, and, and parts. What are some other pieces that are part of this, this picture that we might want to look at? And I think, you know, we're, when you're navigating this, this shame, you, you certainly want to be working with the underlying topics, um, that you're, that maybe are adding to it, uh, or are part of your picture. So to be able to recognize what circumstances are currently going on in your life, um, what sorts of maybe emotionally abusive situations, manipulative relationships. Um, you know, I think gaslighting is, is profoundly common and incredibly destructive to our well being. Um, and that, I think is one of those things that, that we can be, and we can actively gaslight ourselves. I know that I've totally done that um, because I wanted to be a spiritual good person. And, you know, it's the only thing I can work on is me. And that's true. And also, if I'm only thinking about that, I'm going to be putting my actual lived reality kind of last. It's it's not being really truthful that this doesn't work for me. <laughs> you know, instead I, I will just try to twist myself into shapes in order to tolerate what's happening. So that, that self gaslighting, I think is a, is a significant part of, of what happens. Yeah, I, I can definitely relate with that one <laughs> as I'm sure we all can. Um, you know, and I, I was in a relationship for quite a long time where he was, uh, gaslighting and controlling and emotionally abusive. So, you know, I, I didn't really know it was happening for a while. You know, I just kept thinking I was, you know, misremembering or I didn't know. And, let me tell you too, that if you're in a relationship where there's a good amount of drugs or uh, drinking involved in the way that you spend time together, this makes it all the more worse <laughs> because you might not have a clear memory of what happened the night before. And then when the partner is telling you, you know, that you said something or did something and you don't remember it that way, you're not a hundred percent sure. And so it's the perfect, like scenario for abusive and manipulative people to, um, to, to live. And, you know, um, and unfortunately I had that lived experience for a few years and it took me a while to, to, to really start to believe in myself. And part of that was reducing and cleaning up the, um, the behavior with drugs and alcohol, definitely, um, to just get some clarity and insight and to start believing in myself, like that I, um, had a voice and I could take up space and I was, you know, it's not so much a matter of right and wrong in the, he said, she said that exact word that somebody said, it's what is that feeling that is you're getting? And what is that person making you feel? And if they're making you feel like you are a bad person, um, that's some, that's where I think there's something to question. That's where you might start seeing some red flags. Um, when you start getting those feelings like that, the, you know, that they're thinking that you're, telling you that maybe you're crazy or you're this way or you're that way, putting you in some kind of box, telling you how you feel, how you're supposed to feel. You know, there's all these little red flags uh, that you can look at. There's some great books out there. So if you're in that position, um, I think Patricia Evans' book, Controlling People, was one and, and The Verbally Abusive Relationship was another book that I read a decade or so ago when I was in that situation. And it was really, really helpful. For flower essences, I mean, ugh, boy, this is like, again, this is such a big subject, <laughs> um, but I, I do frequently work with have basic self-confidence challenges. And so there's a few that, you know, like that's a place to start too. It's just believing in yourself. Um, 
believing that you have um, that you have a right to be here and you have a right to your feelings and your feelings aren't necessarily, uh, you don't need to pathologize <laughs> your, you know, your needs and your feelings that if you feel upset or emotional about something, it doesn't mean that you're, you're over emotional or you're PMSing or you're this, or you're that. <laughs> so I kind of go to that core, like, let's, let's look into that third chakra that just that core, who I am. Um, and I put gold in all, almost all my formulas because of that. It really helps us to access our inner value and uh, bring forth that into our, you know, in a very like subtle, but grounded way in, in our dealings. Yeah. Gold <laughs> that, that gem elixir just comes up so often because so many of us don't feel like we have any value. You know, we've, we've, we've been told by the world that we don't, um, we've been told that we're, you know, unimportant and our feelings aren't important and, you know, who we are is disposable. My favorite essence for this aspect, um, is the lady banks rose. This is one of the essences in my line of flora of Asia essences. And it's just, it, it, you know, once again, we're, we're looping back to the Rosaceae family. The agrimony is in the Rosaceae family. And it, it is this quality of unconditional self-acceptance and appreciation that, you know, being in the embrace of the Lady Banks Rose is there is nothing wrong with you. You are fine. <laughs> you are as you are supposed to be. Um, and you are appreciated for that. To be able to live this experience, to be able to, to feel this, this energy in your body is such a gift and such a, a wonderful healing journey part of overcoming this um, toxicity of shame. Yeah. And I use your Lady Banks Rose all the time as well, um, just for that exact reason. It's one of the, I think from your collection, from the Flora of Asia line of flower essences, it's one of the ones I use the most. So thank you for that. <laughs> it's a good one. Oh, good. I'm glad it works the same. I, did, I, I know that other practitioners have told me like, yeah, this is like a really important essence. And it's, and it's one that, because this topic is so near and dear to my heart, as it were, um, and into my practice, it is something that I did create um, a combination formula around um, the topic of shame. Uh, I call it innocent, uh, because that is the healing field of shame is to recognize, you know, who, your value and that you are untouched by this and that this, this feeling of shame doesn't have to be who you are, and it's not who you are. Um, and so there are, are some other essences in there that are really appropriate for shame and to help kind of build back up your experience. And I, I don't know if any of the, the other companies have really worked with the shame issue very specifically like that. And I felt like it was really important to have that as part of my collection of, of sort of pre-made formulas because it's such a big topic. Yeah, that's the, the innocent combination that, that you have. Um, Right. Is that a, that's not a spray, is it? That's a, uh, I haven't used that one. Mm. Yeah. I, I package it with a, a spray top so that it, mm -hmm. similar way to the way that flower essence society packages theirs, because I think it's just handier and easier to use on a regular basis. You know, you can keep it in your purse and not worry about, you know, dropping the bottle and <laughs> having the top spin off and, and drop it. Um, so you can use it internally. Um, it doesn't have any essential oils in it. It's just, it's just a flower essence formula, um, yeah. but it is packaged so that you could use it externally also if you wished. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, so your, you know, your experience and your life experience and working with the clients and you specialize in this, I think you're the, you know, you're the perfect flower essence producer to be creating um, a formula basically for this topic, for shame that we're talking about. So um, yeah, that's, that's a, uh, it's perfect. Expert from within, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What other essences or, or, or topics did you want to dig into? Yeah. There's so much. I know there is so much, um, you know, there's a, there's a few too, that I like to, I like to incorporate usually in blends, um, that, and this is more about just personal kind of, you know, developing personal power. So it's, it's not just about the shame, um, 
issue, but the, um, you know, Rosemary is, is actually one. And, and it's, it speaks to me because it, it helps to feel warm and secure in your body. And it renews your life force when you're disconnected from your body, but also, so, you know, like herbally it's used for circulation. So you can kind of see that tie in there's that, there's that life, that warming, invigorating kind of life force that it brings, you know, rosemary, it's got that strong smell. It's so spicy, um, but it has this rich uh, tradition of folklore around it. And, and um, one of the, one of the, 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 the stories is, you know, that there's a, there was a belief that if rosemary grew by your front door, then the woman rules the house. And if rosemary didn't grow, you know, if rosemary didn't grow on the property, you know, basically the, you know, their, their woman had no, you know, the, no, the man ruled the house or they didn't have the power. And so there, there was a whole, all, I think in, it was in England and maybe Italy and some other countries um, that had this really kind of longstanding sort of beliefs about rosemary and women's power. And I think it's just fascinating. And there's all sorts of variations on that, on that belief. You know, if, if rosemary is by the door, the woman wears the pants in the family or, you know, like it's just kind of funny little, little things. And I, I love that because I, I see that strength of rosemary, um, and I've, you know, I've, I always put a rosemary plant <laughs> near, the, near my house. It's just, it's just a fun little thing, but, but the essence, I just, I see it really bringing a person's like uh, life force to bear. So, so when I see, um, when I see a woman or somebody who has a very sort of timid personality um, maybe, you know, you can just kind of see it in their, in their body language. I, I, I love that, that Rosemary can come in and sort of infuse that body with that energy of being alive and being a person who like has a right to be here. And I really love the, the, um, the way that it it's, it's for women. I mean, it just has that, that uh, kind of sacred feminine queenly energy to it. And, and I want to bring, I like to bring in flowers that have that sort of sacred feminine queenly energy to just help boost whatever we're working with, with within a blend. Uh, Rosemary is one of them. Evening primrose is another one. Queen Anne's lace is another one. Interesting. Rosemary isn't one that I, that I use a lot. So I'm, I'm delighted to hear your experiences with it, which, which makes me think of that energetic of that congestion. Um, and I certainly see that in shame, that congestion is in the lower body, like in the lower chakras, in the pelvis. And so often our shame experiences maybe have originated when those chakras are coming online, when we were little kids you know, like once upon a time, you know, I don't know, I, I hope this is different now. Um, you know, but we were taught to be ashamed of our bodies. We were taught to be ashamed of, of, you know, our, our sexual organs and of pooping and, you know, th those sorts of things, at least that was a little bit of my upbringing. Um, <laughs> hopefully that's not happening anymore. Oh my God. Um, but so that, that quality of congestion in the lower body, I, I know that this is something that I've experienced from, and I think that it comes out of those experiences and to be able to start moving that, moving that energy, moving that energy in the second chakra, moving that energy in the first chakra um, really helps you. I mean, for one thing, you can't ground if you are not, if you don't have a first chakra working, um, you can't be in your body if your second chakra isn't working. So I love to hear how you're using rosemary in that context and that how it helps to release some of this toxic shame sort of imprinting and overlapping onto those lower chakras. I'm using white, white lily a lot for that. Um, and the, the, once again, the Liliaceae family is very much affiliated with uh, certainly the second chakra, but I think also the first as well. Um, and the, the white lily, um, and it has a white flower in the, 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 um, 
um, botanical name is Lilium leucanthum, and leucanthum means white. So <laughs> I sort of got really specific, really um, literal with the name. It doesn't have a common name other than that. Um, but the, this particular lily helps us to connect in with our body's wisdom and what our body wants and what she doesn't want um, and what, what our desires and appetites are outside of these conditioned reflexes of like, what I want isn't right. You know, whether it's what you want to eat or whether it's what you want in your life. And to be able to start nourishing those lower chakras through an essence that helps to connect you to your deepest self, your most rooted self, I think is part of this process of restoring the natural flow that we should be able to connect to when we when we've gotten distorted from this shame kind of scenario. Yeah, I uh, that that makes a lot of sense. The other thing with rosemary, I wanted to say is that it's commonly used for memory and for remembrance, um, herbally and spiritually. So when I combine that with the 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 deep feminine power that it has. I like to say it helps you remember your power as a woman. So I kind of bring it down to that, to that as well. Like we're not just drawing upon our own inner personal power, but you know, the power of all the women before us and, you know, that, you know, I, I like that, like that matriarchal line of, 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 our ancestry and they, you know, I want them to I want that energy to kind of help infuse us to, to stand up and have our own personal power. But I like what you're saying a lot about that first chakra. You can't ground um, if you're not in your body, basically. And part of um, not being in the body is also not feeling like you have a right to be here, to exist, to take up space. And in essence, I like a lot about um, to work with that is the devil's club. It helps with that um, kind of giving yourself permission. I have a permission to be here um, and that I am secure in my surroundings. So like to, to start to feel that, of course, again, if you're not physically, literally secure, <laughs> that's not going to help. You need to, to, um, to tackle that with uh, more practical, I guess, means. Uh, but it, what do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. I, I use devil's club so much for people who don't feel like, who, who tend to get kind of run over, you know, by other people who have more powerful personalities or when they don't feel like they have the right to take up space. You know, when you, when you, when you don't feel like there's kind of enough resources and therefore you shouldn't have anything that that's the kind of situation where I think of devil's club and, and devil's club, I use it probably equally as much for issues of setting boundaries. And so often when this toxic, toxic shame um, experiences is, is so deeply embodied, we don't feel like we have the right to say no to anything. We don't feel like we have the right to set a boundary because, you know, then I will be less acceptable than I am now. And I'm not even acceptable at all now. So it, 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 it's sort of this horrid negative spiral. I, I don't think that we can talk, you know, fully about this topic. Well, we can't talk about this fully in, in the 45 minutes that we talk, but, um, without talking a little bit about century, um, uh, box century, it is, it, it goes into that doormat scenario. You know, when we feel like our only value is of, to be of service and we can't say no and, you know, um, we over serve and that's, and that's a really big problem, um, certainly for women, but a lot of people just, you know, don't, haven't learned that, that, that they're, their needs are appropriate and right. And they shouldn't just automatically discard their own needs because somebody else wants something. Um, it's, it's such an important essence. I'm, I'm sure that you use it also. Yeah. And that, that was exactly the essence I was going to say next. That is, um, perfectly, um, appropriate, uh, whenever somebody is, putting other, the needs of other people first, um, exactly what you said, letting, being a doormat, placating people, um, 
especially when they're being abusive, you know? So of course we, we grow up probably, um, doing that for, as a, a self-preservation, you know, a technique to, to preserve ourselves. Um, but the century can, can help, I think, just feel, you know, I, I think a big part of that is just that recognition, right? We, we don't even see that we're doing it when it becomes part of us and part of our personality. So a, a big piece of this and what's so helpful about a lot of these essences is um, this ability for the flower essences to help you see things differently, right? To see, to just and it's so subtle, but there's like gradual awakening that happens where a, a different perspective may come to mind. Um, there's more consciousness. It's like a there's more conscious awareness about things that are happening and your and then what you're doing and what the you know what's really happening. Um, Century is a great one to be part of that. Yeah, the, the essences give this clarity this this ability to recognize what's really true it, they help us get in our bodies they help us release some of the nonsense that's been put on us um, that we've been told um, and and can really uh, help us reconnect to who we actually are and that we have value and that we are okay as we are and you're valued and appreciated and you know nature loves you <laughs> you don't have to perform for nature um i i think that that's such a gift to have these essences in our lives and to be able to help this deep deep level of healing you know are there any other things that we absolutely have to have in this conversation um you know it's this is sort of one of those conversations that we can either talk for you know an hour or 30 hours <laughs> Once we open things up, there's so much that's possible, but anything that we haven't talked about? Yeah. I mean, I, I would just briefly add, um, black tourmaline and pink yarrow just for removing that of the black tourmaline, you know, releasing what's not yours, that, um, toxic energy that might be around you in your space, in your body, because of whatever is happening. I think the black tourmaline can help remove that and release that and um, transmute that. And then especially for a lot of our listeners who are highly sensitive, I mean, we're taking in not just what, what is happening in the situation, but also all of this toxic energy from the other person that might be part of it. And it makes it even more confusing. It makes it so confusing to know what are my feelings? What are not my feelings? How should I feel? <laughs> uh, get started with that that pink um, that pink yarrow uh, definitely to to help with the tendency to merge emotionally with other people and absorb the you know their um, their energy and especially if they have a violent toxic nature it's really really damaging and I would definitely in addition to doing whatever else needs to be done, get, get working with that pink yarrow. Yeah. Could not agree more. <laughs> pink yarrow and, and pink monkey flower are kind of like two that sort of end up in a lot of formulas because yeah, that, that those, those, all the yarrows, um, but particularly the pink in this particular circumstance are absolute partners to anyone who's experiencing this because the shame does absolutely spiral you out of your heart and spiral you into other people's energy fields. Uh, and that pink arrow helps you to create a differentiation line between this is actually somebody else's thing <laughs> and it might, it's, it's starting to come into my field, but it's actually not mine. Um, so I, I completely second that importance of, of, and the black tourmaline as well. I think that's, a, that's an excellent thought. And that's something that I would be thinking of kind of looping back to pine because pine helps to clarify and, and release. And then the black tourmaline could come in and, and also um, sort of support that action in, in the formula. So thank you for bringing that in. Yeah. Were there any others you wanted to briefly bring in? Yeah, I think that we've, I don't want to overwhelm. I, I really feel like it's important to, to talk about the things that are absolutely our first lines, because if you are working through shame, you can get very lost in the details. You can get really spun out. And, you know, for anyone listening, who's 
you know, wanting to start working with this shame process, um, pick one, pick two, pick a couple maybe, um, and, and start working with them like I did with Pine. Just, you know, dig in and start working with them for at least a month on the same essences and see what changes. And I think that you will be delighted and surprised and um, your life will be better for having worked with some of these essences and releasing this, you know, it's a miserable feeling to feel shame. Let's, let's like make the world a better place by not having that going on. Absolutely. So this sounds like a good place to, to end it. And uh, thank you everyone for sticking with us through this challenging topic. <laughs> important. It's, uh, it's so important. And you know, it's definitely triggering probably for, for us as far as, as well as some of you. So um, I'll just spray some soul support right now for all of us <laughs> virtually <laughs> as we, uh, yes, <laughs> take it in and, uh, and wrap up the podcast. So thanks again for listening. Thank you to our patrons. We are so appreciative of your support and uh you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll put a, something special in the, in the pay, in the, um, the Patreon feed for our patrons that will give some extra information on this topic. What do you think? I think that's great. I think that it would be, we have so many more essences that we could talk about. And so we might give a little bit there, um, to just to let you know, some of the other essences that we think about professionally when we're working with clients who are experiencing shame. So yeah, check that out in the Patreon, um, feed for our lovely, so appreciated patrons. Thank you so much for taking part in that with us and helping to support this work going out into the world. People need flower essences more than ever. And we are, our intention and, you know, our focus is to help people as help as many people as we can. Thank you. And bye-bye now. Bye.